tall, toolsy quarterback that flashes every quality of a premier starter, Drake May has polarized a lot of people during this draft season. Ticking the boxes for arm, athleticism, and anticipation, there is certainly the making of an elite quarterback there. However, the deeper you look, the more erratic the tape becomes, struggling with the accuracy and eye discipline necessary to operate a truly efficient offense. The tape's been watched, cut, and reviewed, so here's everything you need to know about Mr. May. Let's start with the good stuff, and there's no doubting the arm talent. Able to hit every blade of grass, May can stretch the field horizontally and vertically with a gun arm, showing great touch when mechanics remain in check. Hitting the corner route requires timing and a big arm, and this is extended further throwing across college hashes. The defense are signaling man and try to hurry May by bringing an extra body, but he's quick to read the safety, spotting that he's stuck with inside leverage against the corner and timing the bucket drop for the chunk pickup. When the mechanics stay in check, he's got the accuracy to attack deep down the field, showing both strength and touch to layer this to the boundary. And he doesn't need to be on a platform to tap into that strength. Forced off the spot here against Clemson, look at the power to whip this rolling right, throwing off his back foot for the long score. The speed of the gun allows him to attack tight windows between zones. His man's running a hook route here, and with Notre Dame's signaling zone, he's putting this right between the defenders to get back ahead of the count. The crazy arm angles we've become so accustomed to seeing in modern QBs continues with May, slicing off angle throws to find obscure passing lanes. North Carolina are running a flood boot left play here, but the defense is all over it, staying disciplined backside to bring pressure on May. However, they've lost the tight end on the hook, and May manages to contort himself to throw cross body, sniping a gap between the pass rushers. He's a big proponent of the flick pass too. Using it when winding into a full motion would take too long and allow a rusher to disrupt the throwing lane. And he ain't afraid to put a little sauce on it. Pulling off one of the plays of the season last year, UNC are running a zone read and May makes the wrong choice to keep it with the end hustling hard to pressure him. Seeing May keep it, the corner leaves his man to help in the tackle, but this leaves the wide receiver open and somehow, with the man draped off him and another coming to lay a shoulder, May throws this with his left hand. Left hand. Right to his receiver for the score. I mean, come on. Like, that's what we're doing now? We're just throwing with our offhand for fun? May's plus movement is practically required for the modern-day quarterback. And while he's not on that rust level yet, he's definitely got the wheels and shifts to make someone miss, extend a play, and punish a broken defense. Here, UNC are clearing out one side of the field, then bringing a receiver underneath on the drag route into the created space. I want to see him throw this early and allow Tez to make a play, because he sure can, but fearing the lurking linebacker ready to pop his man, May rejects it, but shows nice movement to move through the muddy pocket, sidestepping one man and weaving back through another, and then with his eyes up, shows the arm, throwing on a line back to Tez cross hash. Now's a good time to mention that this UNC line was trash, and they were definitely caught out by blitz packages, leaving May with a fair bit of pressure to deal with. Here, the defense creeped the linebackers up, showing the double A-gap blitz, but drop an end to double and one of them to spy, leaving the line confused as to who to block. The backer gets square on the running back and clubs his ass to the floor, leaving May with immediate pressure. But knowing he's got a man open, he'll try to work up and through somehow getting this to his man with pressure all over him. I'm not a big fan of the play call here, but noticing everything covered and only a three-man rush, he buys time for his receiver to stun on the safety, then puts up a rainbow 50 yards deep downfield right over the shoulder of his man. It's more than just slides and extensions though, he's got the wheels to escape the rush wide, and if you back off, he'll attack the space and ain't afraid to put a move on you. Here, May is quick on his read of the defense, spotting the one high man coverage with the double backer blitz and knows as soon as his receivers have turned their man, he can take off into the green green grass. And here on the long third, it's zone. But May reads everything's covered and spots a wide gap calling his own number and juking the mic into the next solar system, then hitting the big slide once he's got the first. There were a lot of carries called for him in his time at UNC, and this is a slick move off the modern triple option. May keeps off the first read, and then seeing the end get too wide, slices him back inside 
attacking the open space looking for blockers. But here's something that concerns me. He's not always careful with his body, taking a big lick here. The QB draw was another staple of the film, and this is a great runner's vision to wrap his path around his offensive line and get to the boundary, taking every available yard. And he really does have the athleticism to break the edge. This will mostly be a change-up surprise play in the NFL. Don't be shocked if he makes a few defenders look silly. Gotta protect that body though, bro. As great as athletic tools are, we tell you over and over, the game of quarterbacking is a mental one. Knowing how to read a defense, anticipate a throw, and go through your progressions will always be more important than any laser arm or scrambling ability. Luckily for teams and fans, May shows flashes in all of these departments, and some high-level reps in parts that are hard to teach. Let's start with reading a defense, and here, May shows promise with plenty of quick dart understanding and good processing to push the ball to the intermediate. He's got the quick stuff down and looks to dart early on important downs. Reading the space offered for this curl flat concept, May just catches and throws, beating the defense and allowing his player to do the work. We always talk about how important these quick boundary outs are because they require both quick decision and a gun arm to throw them precisely. Again, that outside man is dropping, this time to a deep quarter, and the linebacker has inside leverage in his zone, meaning it's free real estate for the offense. Quarterbacks are taught to watch the safeties to identify a defense, and May's eyes not only read the coverage here, but catch the defense napping. Off the play action, May can read the cover three and has his eyes on the safety, doesn't tag the over route, and doesn't get deep enough to cut off the post. So May snipes it over his head, throwing an absolutely perfect ball, but it's unfortunately dropped. And here's more aggression and a good read of the safeties. A late rundown blitz from the safeties shifts this to man coverage with the safety shaded to the bunch. And that's immediately where May's eyes go to after the rush. The safety opens his hips to the boundary, so May steps up and throws to his breaking route, hitting a dart that carries his receiver into the end zone. Continually touted on this channel as the hardest skill to learn, when in rhythm, May shows great flashes of anticipation and throws balls that are simply impossible to defend. Reading the too high shell here, Drake quickly spots the drop to Tampa 2, attacking its weak spot between zone levels and the boundary. The ball is released right as the corner breaks, not giving the safety even a single chance to play the ball on the condensed side of the field. Attacking the middle of the field this time, Drake's gonna throw a nasty ball through the heart of the defense. The backers are up like earlier, threatening to blitz the A-gaps, but it's just a bluff as they form a man-match drop eight. Fancy drops mean nothing if you leave the middle open though, and May throws a strike early, hitting that green grass with anticipation. Getting aggressive here, Drake is going to attack the weak spot early. The defense initially looks to be in man coverage against the five wide formation, but with his eyes on the safeties, he spots the true coverage. The safety goes to a back pedal and gets his eyes inside, taking them off the slot, tipping May off that this is zone. With the weak side safety staying low and the corner dropping, he's all over to cover six, throwing the seam ball early and in stride to his man for the score. And here's as early as you can throw the ball. A long third down leaves you at a massive disadvantage, and his line makes this even worse by letting up the quick pressure. But May trusts his vision and his man to get open, throwing this a step before the cut and to the perfect spot for the first. NFL defenses game plan like no other, and consistently work to take away your number one option. So progressions are required to work through the concept. Here, May shows some nice reps, but his eyes do get stuck to his first read occasionally. Running a levels concept here on third and medium, Drake's eyes will first go to his receiver at the bottom of your screen, eyeing the near one-on-one -on -one matchup that he has. But the DB does a good job to fight at the breaking point and stop any throw, so he works backside to the levels. The drag route is taken away by middle linebackers. The dig is taken away by the strong side backer drifting with it and the safety is collapsing. But all of this opens up space to throw the in route as Drake darts to his fourth read for the first down. Backed up on a long third down here, more good reading finds the open receiver. His eyes are flickering early to find the safeties. Then spotting the box coverage to the near side rejects this 2v4 matchup, working the far side where his receivers have one-on-one -on -one matchups against the quarters. 
The comeback route in these situations is almost always open if thrown with anticipation. And May does just that, getting the ball to his man as both men slip on the same piece of turf. And here, his progressions allow him to take a big shot downfield. Both his routes on the far side look smothered. So working to the near side, May spots the safety attach and chase the crosser and immediately pulls the trigger, firing deep to the post for a big chunk pickup. And he ain't afraid to stand in there amongst contact when he has the read either. Here, Oregon again sends the blitz versus the poorest North Carolina line, and a rusher comes clean through the B-gap, ready to lay the wood. With the middle of the field vacant, May throws early, knowing he's gonna take a shot, so delivers one of his own. So far, this looks exactly like what you'd be looking for in a franchise leader. So why the hesitation to stamp through the approval? Well, the more tape you watch, the more erratic every aspect of his game becomes. For every solidifying rep that makes you want to draft him, there's an ugly throw or horrific read that makes you question what he's seeing. Of the top three guys in this draft, his accuracy is definitely the most erratic and it causes him to miss a lot of easy throws. For every quick out hit, there's a miss like this. The read is correct. He just rushes his footwork and gets caught in some awkward mechanics. Weight going back, sailing this wide of his man. And here it is again. The space to the boundary is open based on the man coverage and leverage. But May jumps through his footwork and sails the ball wide. These throws are on, you just gotta hit him. His arm is strong and easily able to push the ball downfield. The problem is his location with it is also incredibly erratic. Again, there's a rush through the footwork off the play action, and the weight transfer is all over the place, leaving it way short and in the boundary. And watch the big leap on the drop here, jumping to get to his final step, then launching a moon ball over his man and into the sideline. The decision is okay, the throw is just way off. Again, rocking back as he throws, just not giving his receiver a chance. Even when throwing from completely clean pockets, he's rushing and scattering these. No point having a big arm if you can't actually stretch the field. Exacerbating these issues is not just a case of overthrowing. Too often does he fail to lead his receivers, routinely hitting receivers in the back hip and shoulder, forcing a swivel in the momentum, leading to multiple drops and many a first down missed. He's a step late on this staggered slant and then still finds the back shoulder of his man allowing the DB to play around his body and break up the pass. This is a nice and aggressive throw here against Clemson to throw the out at the breaking point, but he can't throw it to the boundary, throwing inside and upfield, allowing the DB to make a play and break up the ball. Again, late on a ball, he's tap, tap, tapping instead of just trusting his eyes and throwing the crosser. And when he does finally release, it's behind his man, forcing a full pivot spin in to try and catch and the receiver isn't up to the task. But here's a man who was. Kobe Pesor comes in motion to become the inside slot, and with everyone up at the line, his option route cuts him into open grass. May reads the play just fine, but is way behind his receiver. Luckily for him, Pesor tips it up, then tips it away from the defender, pivots and sprints all the way to the house. If that play doesn't make you think stats in football are bullshit, I don't know what will. Honestly, most of this is on his footwork. The rhythm is all off. There's continuous jump steps and skipping of steps entirely. And he's often drifting off the desired path, moving himself out of the center of the pocket and directly into harm's way. As fun as sidearm angle bullet balls are to watch, the NFL is a timing-based lead. Failing to keep your footwork in rhythm with the play means easy drive extenders are missed. And there's a hell of a lot more difficulty on every throw attempt. His improv and movement skills are also severely hampered due to accuracy, not allowing these skills to fully be taken advantage of. In the emulsified egg bowl, pressure is gonna stop him from attacking the dig, but after escaping right, he's got him again for a big catch and run. Yet he waits too long and then fails to throw this with any lead, putting it directly on his man and allowing the DB to jump it. This one's just a routine throw off the rollout that goes horribly wrong. Nice design play to trap the end and create space for the roll into the flood concept. And the big out is wide open. He just doesn't put enough air on it, throwing it straight at the defender who says thank you very much and takes this inside the 20. And he's not immune from the odd head scratcher either. There's nothing open here as Clemson drops 9 into coverage, 
but instead of staying in the pocket, May tries to half roll left, allowing the rush to break the pocket even with just two of them coming. Forced back right, May has a guy open in the flat, but waits way too fucking long to throw it, then just lasers it straight behind him and right between the numbers of the safety, who's gonna take this all the way back to the crib. If it was just one part of the game that was inconsistent, I would feel confident that a good coach could fix up the footwork. But his reading equals his passing, making poor decisions and leaving way too much on the table. It's man coverage against the bunch formation, but Drake fails to go through his progressions, getting stuck to his first read. Clemson tries to change late, leaving the safety on the tight end needing to get outside through the traffic. And it would have been a walk-in score if May doesn't target lock. Other times, May just isn't willing to pull the trigger despite definitely seeing the coverage. Again, the three receivers work together to create space, with two runoff routes and a whip route to attack the created space. May works through the progressions, first checking whether either clear out route is open, then gets back to the whip breaking in, but just doesn't throw it, hesitating his way into pressure and an eventual sack. Here, the play action isn't pretty, but it is effective in making the safety hesitate and there's a deep shot in behind available. May's got his eyes on it, but for some reason turns it down for the checkdown. And when the pressure piles on, the chaos multiplies. Here on the first third down of the game, his right guard is gonna completely whiff his block, allowing immediate pressure through to number 10. He does a great job to sidestep it, not to take the full hit, but he's gotta learn to play for another down here. Instead, just trebucheting the ball into double coverage. Yet, somehow, this isn't caught. And here, with the rusher incoming, he commits a cardinal sin of quarterbacking. Looking at the rush rather than the field, this slows him down just enough for the contact to interrupt the throw, launching this straight at a linebacker, but once again, he's bailed out by a drop. All this pressure from his porous O-line leads to him seeing ghosts at times, and it's concerning as it negates any good snaps you see with pocket movement. Again, another nice design bunch route opens a throw to the boundary, but May doesn't throw it. He opens up ready for the throw, but feels the pressure as if it's already got to him, spooking him from releasing and leading to a tuck and run. The simulated pressure and cover roll spooks him here, and he misses a chance up the seam. Virginia show four, but send a different four, rolling into a cover six. You can see that instead of going through his progressions, May spooks himself abandoning a clean pocket and completely missing his man up the seam. He finds a receiver on the boundary, but that's still a missed read. And this one is definitely a bad sign of ghosts. The play action and pump fake works to perfection to get a player streaking right up the middle, but something sets the alarm bells ringing, and May is tucking and running from a clean pocket instead of taking the shot. The offensive line was poor, that's definitely true, but it's concerning to see the ghosts early. If you tell me you've seen all the tools you need to draft Drake May number one overall, I'd say you're probably correct. But have you watched the rest of the tape though? He really does show every skill set you look for, and those dudes just don't come around very often. The problem is, it's just so erratic. What exactly is the floor here? You can't be throwing the ball consistently at the back hip of your man because you'll be throwing it straight to the opponent in the NFL. Combine that with erratic reading, and you've got a QB that seems to fluctuate from elite prospect to turnover machine. The talent is there to justify the early pick. Just please, for the love of God, keep Cliff Kingsbury away from him.